Okay, so I'm just a sucker for a record, as you've probably guessed. And I've got a pile here, and uh, goodness knows why I buy records, really, because uh, I don't really listen to them. It's terrible. I, I like them from a sort of physical um, point of view. I like the sleeves or the covers. You know, I just like I just like the actual physical objects. And yeah, sure, I do play them, and uh, I do pay some attention to what's on them. But uh, I just like I just like records, really. Um, anyway, um, these are some I picked up recently in a charity shop. Um, let's look at a record or two first. This is a Crown. I think these are nine inch, and uh, these were cheapy records or cheaper records. This is Ye Oldie Time Dances, or of course the Old Time Dances, as I should really be saying. Maybe get that a bit closer to the lens. Um, and this is Billy Merrin and his uh commanders uh made in england it's a waltz it's 90 it's a crown 97 and if we flip it over on the other side we have um part two of the same thing so let's put some of these here maybe i might have to take some off and put them somewhere else um this is another crown i mean these sleeves these these look like they were made yesterday um you know made in england this copyright record must not be used for public performance i don't know if you can see that um this is even fragrant memories this is rossini's accordion band Let's see if we can get that in camera shot there um i think this might be the same outfit as prima scalis accordion band but just uh under a different name because they were recording under a different label. I'm not 100% sure about that. And in fact, even Primo Scalia's accordion band, I think is Big Good um, and, well, Big Good and uh, his normal band or part of his band, something like that. Anyway, um, that's that side. Uh, yes, it says accordion there. And on the other side, the wheel off the wagon is broken that sounds familiar actually and you can see they didn't make any effort to make the labels line up on either side so as i was saying i got these in a charity shop uh fairly recently this is the gay 90s waltz um i can't read that last bit waltz medley um 73 this one is and on the other side is part two of the same thing and uh, I think these records were about a pound each so I'm not sure how many there are but we'll see but uh, it was something like that they were about a pound each um, this one um, now I am a sucker for a, a nice sleeve or cover I mean this this to be frank is a is a paper bag there's, there's no doubt about it um, this is nothing more exciting than a paper bag but I, but I quite liked it and uh, it says G.H. Graham, gramophone specialist. Everything from a needle to a complete machine. Interesting, actually, that it uses the word machine and not instrument. Um, as I have said, uh, I think, on previous occasions, uh, companies like HMV were not very keen on them, their uh, machines being called machines. That was, that was far too lower class too mechanical they they wanted to, their uh, their uh, gramophones to be referred to as instruments because it made them sound like musical instruments and that was much more uh, you know upper class or at least middle class uh, anyway so that's the that's that bag uh, inside is a little edison bell radio um and i can't read all of that but it certainly says the wedding Waltz, and that's uh, by the Scalar Saloon Orchestra, which will be a pseudonym uh, on uh, Edison Bell 982. And on the other side, um, Tales from the Vienna Woods um, by the same band. Now the next one is this rather beat up uh, rec sleeve, the king of records as they say. Um, but it's got a crown inside and uh, you can see 
that the crown is uh, is rather smaller than the the standard 10 inch record um so this is blaze away this is wingate's temperance prize band Let, let's get that a bit closer so you can actually see um this is a uh, crown 15a and on the other side which uh is 15b is a uh, progress march by the same people now this next one here this um well i do like the sleeve or the cover as they were known at the time um this um can be dated to probably the early 1930s based on the fact um you've got a machine here let's let, get it in camera shot um that's very much like the uh the hmv 130 wind up gramophone that i've got but it's got an electrical pickup so this is just a little bit later this is probably early 30s and you've got a radiogram here uh, again looking a lot like a wind up gramophone but it's all electrical um yeah a piano forte gramophone and radio warehouse and um what else does it say um it's from kendall olverston kendall so uh yeah um it's a shame there's nothing on the other side um the actual record is a decker now i don't buy many deckers but this is a violin solo this is Val's Bluet, um, presumably played by William Primrose on F1597. So I quite like violin music, and I know somebody who quite likes violin music as well. So uh, I pick these up when I see them. And uh, on the other side is Tempo Diminuetto, um, which interesting enough looks like it was arranged by Kriesler, um which are which will be relevant in a minute i think and uh, uh but played again by william primrose right so next off the stack is this paragon now what a lovely sleeve or cover as i should say um it's got a it's got a nice picture of a of a wind up gramophone that looks kind of sort of early 1920s um and it's got this uh this paragon logo here I'll get that into camera shot um of a wind up uh, horn gramophone it's un unusual i think to find horn gramophones on sleeves horn gramophones were not you know they weren't considered to be that great um in this this sort of era people had very much gone for the the hornless models and uh they were being treated as as bits of furniture and uh horn gramophones were considered you know a bit sort of bulky and ugly and functional um how things change as horn gramophones now are are what uh every uh, <laughs> every collector um and uh for that matter interior designer seems to seems to want anyway uh, a lovely sleeve there i mean uh, quite typically they're selling bicycles as well that's not unusual what does it say repairs executed while you wait all motors and parts in stock gramophones and cabinets let out on easy payments and this is uh this is mile end road london so um this is from london um yeah and actually um i can probably tell we get the actual list here um regal zonophone guardsman winner i mean yeah it's it's certainly 20s and actually the stitching on the sleeve as well again can i get that camera shot stitching on the sleeve there that indicates sort of early on in the 20s rather than later on when uh uh covers were actually sort of gum taped together rather more um so this is actually a uh, wall selection by reginald dixon on the famous oh, the famous blackpool organist 
and uh, on the other side is also wall selection um, by the same person. And to be honest, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's probably quite a nice record, but uh, I most certainly got this one for the cover. So the next one is this um, this one here. This is W. Rogers and Son Olverston. Um, so the sleeve itself or the cover not so interesting although it's got the gummed tape get that in camera shot the gum tape sides here well at least it would do in fact, it looks like the gum tape's completely missing in fact uh, mm, yes i think the gum tape is completely missing um interestingly enough it does have a, a little bit of christmas gum tape there from a christmas of many years ago uh, I certainly remember this sort of stuff kicking around when I was a child. Um, there was the, the odd bit of it in the bottom of the box sort of thing. Um, but uh, paper tape like this uh, was quite common, I think, uh, in years gone by. Um, so is there anything else worth talking about? Not really. They're talking about uh, pianos. They're talking about um, records from his master's voice, Columbia, Zonophone, Regal um on the back oh a bit more the bit more of the tape there a bit more of that tape there and some writing as well i mean i don't know if this sleeve actually belongs to this record but uh, if we start this side this is gunner joe humorous monologue by stanley holloway um sounds familiar or at least uh, stanley holloway sounds familiar and on the other side um, is Runcorn Ferry um, by the same person. So on to this one here. Now, if you're enjoying this video, then please do give it a like so that I know and that YouTube knows too. Thank you. Anyway, this uh, E. Telfer Music Warehouse, rather sort of a minimalistic sleeve or cover. Um, telephone it's got a two digit telephone number so um, I think Olverston probably wasn't a, a particularly big place or isn't a particularly big place and uh, telephones weren't exactly common there by the looks of it um, what have we got uh, nothing at all on the back now this is actually uh, this is uh, a piano sorry a violin solo a violin with piano this is uh, Caprice Vienos um, played by Fritz Kreisler um, or Kreisler uh, who I mentioned on that other record so the other person was playing an arrangement by this chap this is actually the guy playing himself and this was uh, and Fritz Kreisler was actually uh, a, you know a really quite famous uh, violinist uh, at the time um, and on the other side we have humorous op 101 number seven um, played by the same person now this one here I just had to have I mean I've never seen a cover like this before um, difficult to date i think i mean it says a record from millers of cambridge i haven't looked up millers of cambridge um it's the same both sides there's no there's not really uh, much information we've got this heraldic shields um which probably related to cambridge um so anyway what do we got um i think we'll start on this side this is old sam part one pick up that musket this is a humorous monologue by stanley holloway again um and on this side we have old sam part two alt who goes there um yeah uh, that's on columbia dx 168 i know i haven't read out all the numbers but uh hopefully they've all been visible on camera and then here this one this is lewis limited full range oh well, actually it's not on camera actually there we go lewis limited is that lou lewis is lewis's limited it's quite nice sort of logo down there 
What have we got in camera? If we can get it in camera shot there. Can we get it in camera shot and me read it? Full range of HMV and Columbia instruments. There we go. Instruments, not machines. And records stocked. Also, all gramophone accessories, suite of private audition rooms. Records cannot be exchanged after being taken from the store. And that's partly to stop you uh, buying a new record and taking back your old worn copy uh, of the same record. And on this side, um, it's the same. There's no, there's no differences there. Right, um, and what is actually on it? This is uh, Cohen, Cohen rings up his tailor. Uh, so Cohen is, uh, I think, a comedic character. I've certainly seen records um, with, with you know, Cohen does this and Cohen does that, um, but I can't honestly say that I've listened to any that I know of. Anyway, this is spoken by Mr. Tom Clark. And on this side, um, and that's that. Uh, also, well, this is sung by George Roby. Now, what's interesting is that the tax stamp, if you can see, looks like that it did say one and one eighth of a penny, but uh, it's been changed to two and one eighth of a penny. So either the, the tax went up or the price of the record went up. So the, the amount of tax being paid um, needed, to, needed to increase, something like that. I'm not 100% uh, up on the, the tax um, or the taxing of records at the time, but uh, it just goes to show if the tax on it was a uh, two and one eighth of a penny, then obviously the record cost rather more than that. So anyway, what do you reckon? Let's just quickly count them up. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I think that was eleven pounds worth. Was that a good deal? Anything in there worth playing? Um, would you have bought them? Anyway, um, if you've enjoyed this video, then you might like this one too. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.